everyone, it's Mrs. Cantrell. If you remember the last time we were at Goat in the Garden, Mandy met the owner of Houdini. And then at the very end of the chapter, she found out that the owner has even more goats. So let's pick up from there and see what happens. Remember, there aren't a lot of pictures in this book. Well, the woman said slowly, as if she was making a decision. She had a smile hovering about her mouth. In that case, you better come down and see the herd. She climbed up the bank from the stream with her full bucket, leading the way back to the farm. It's only a small herd, mind you, though the goats will be ready to kid this spring, and I have three kids just now. I don't let them breed, of course. I stick to British Alpines. I like the breed because they have personality, a bit of something about them, if you see what I mean. Mandy glanced at the wicked Houdini and nodded in agreement. They trudged through ankle-deep hoar frost, making a trail across the field. Again, the words poured out, unstoppable. It was to do with goats. The woman seemed to forget everything else. Then suddenly, she stopped, gave Houdini a little thwack on his rump to send him on his way into the yard, turned back to Mandy, and gave a former little bow. You must think me very rude, she said. Only, I didn't, don't get many visitors being so cut off. She cleared her throat. <clears> throat> I'm Lydia Fawcett. I'm pleased to meet you. And she put out her hand. Mandy shook her hand warmly. And do the goats stay indoors for the winter, she asked as they walked on, glad that the frosty reception had melted away. So she's glad that the lady's being friendly now. Do you get that from that? Oh, yes, goats hate the damp. They panic in the rain, and they absolutely detest the cold. Here, Lydia strode ahead and lifted the latch on a small door set into a huge, dilapidated double door of the barn. Mandy followed her, stooped, and stepped inside. The barn was arranged in two rows of pens with a walkway down the middle. It was dusty and dark. But the feel and the sound of contented animals was strong. The place was airy and warm, despite the cold outside. For the stone walls were sturdy, and the floor was deep and clean strong. Mandy watched as Lydia poured fresh water into the drinking pails outside each pen. She saw with delight that at each splash, a goat popped its head quickly out of a keyhole-shaped opening in the front of the pen. They drank noisily and thirstily. How many are here? She asked, making a fuss over Houdini. He'd come up to investigate her pockets once more. Twelve, a nice size for a herd. Lydia had taken a pitchfork from a corner and thrust it into a stack of sweet-smelling hay. Though I confess that twelve takes some feeding through the winter. She dropped hay along each water pail Again, the goats' heads appeared, and they began munching loudly. Lydia sighed and replaced the pitchfork. Goats eat so much bulk. It's the fresh green, she explained. So expensive. She looked sad and worried. Mandy looked at the well-cut barn, its neat rows of pens, the old-fashioned farm tools stacked in one corner and hung in rows along the far wall. I suppose that's why Houdini keeps escaping, she asked, recalling the fresh ivy suits, shoots growing up the front walls of Upper Welford Hall. Lydia dipped a big metal scoop into a wooden bin and began doling out a mixture of oats and barley. Do you know what oats and barley are? They're types of grain. They're things that goats like to eat. The goats snickered with pleasure and began eating again. Was Mr. Western very angry? She asked quietly. Mandy nodded. Oh, yes, purple, fuming. He fell into the pond. She tried to keep a straight face. Oh, my, said Lydia with a look of alarm. Then she burst into a peal of laughter. <laughs> so you just can't help to laugh that he fell in the pond, even though to him, I'm sure it wasn't funny. So we'll see if Mandy and Lydia from the farm become to great friends over time. Have to join in next time to 